you don't have to be this pious, church going, uber religious, dogmatic person to have a direct connection to God. And, you know, that you can eat bacon and drink and yes. curse and be a really, really enjoy and live your human experience and still be divinely guided by God. This is Leah Steele. Welcome to the Wealth Witch Podcast. Just a few years ago, I experienced complete financial collapse. We lost a business, our home, and a car. My husband was selling plasma to pay for diapers and formula. I was living a life I hated, and I was miserable. It was the lowest part of my life. It ended up being my biggest blessing. Just a few short years later, I designed the life of my dreams. I live a life of luxury in beautiful Bali, Indonesia, travel the world, and spend my days helping others manifest wealth and abundance. Living a purpose-led life changed everything for me. This podcast is about my journey, my top tips and tools for manifestation, and interviews with all the amazing, world-changing, inspiring people I meet along the way. Welcome to my world. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Wealth Witch Podcast. I am your host, Leah Steele, and today I am joined by the beautiful, amazing Maria Portis who in addition to being a dear close friend of mine is a divine channel. So Maria, welcome. I'm so glad to have you uh, here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I thought it would be really incredible today to riff on what it means to live divinely guided because I talk about this a lot and I think that it sounds a lot easier than it is. <laughs> to surrender your free will to the divine and make a commitment to live divinely guided. So talk to me a little bit about, I guess, you know, I know that you've had a very, very strong relationship to God since you were a little girl. So maybe just tell us a little bit about how that happened, how that developed, and how you got to where you are now. And for all of the listeners, by the way, Maria and I will likely say God or the divine throughout this podcast, but you know, for you, God, source, universe, all that is, whatever it is that you call God, feel free to uh, plug that in wherever we say God or the divine. So Maria, take it away. Yeah, so I love that you said that because that just that word God has so many different, so many different beliefs come up for so many people. And this is what we want to just drop because it is something that is so natural to who we actually be. And so Leah mentioned that when I grew up, I was actually placed in the perfect family to receive what I needed. So I feel like I had this divine filter and I think most kids have that. And then all of a sudden all the conditioning drops in. But my dad was very connected to God, to the divine, right? So my dad, taught me about God, Jesus, whatever it is you believe, right? But taught me a way of being and a way of connecting. And it had nothing to do with religion. It was just who he was, like innately just, and he used to say, I, I see the face of God in everyone. So I see greatness in everyone. I see that. And no matter how someone showed up, he still chose to see that, okay? So that has worked <laughs> differently for me, like, because some people you know, I see greatness in people and then they show up how they want to and then you need to make a choice of, you know, whether to stay or go or things like that. So I've always seen through the eyes of love, right? So, but I was perfectly placed in that family. Then what happens is that what you are here to give the world, you also have to experience the opposite, right? So at one stage, then the filter of fear dropped in. I was abused um, by my grandfather and that filter of fear dropped in and I saw the world completely different, okay? So I used to be able to see the love energy just floating through. I used to, like everything to me as a little girl was like, I was seeing miracles, like the energy of miracles. Like my dad would talk to me or give me something and I was in that presence of this miracle just birthing, like everything I was seeing as a miracle. And then when, you know, I was abused, that filter dropped in and I saw the world through fear. And it was just two different worlds for me. And I couldn't get out of that also, right? I couldn't get out of that. And so I searched and searched and searched 
for purpose. I searched like give me a reason to be here. Give me a reason because I was so scared. And what happens um, for those, you know, that may have experienced abuse in any way, the abuse stops at one stage and then we continue to abuse ourselves through life. And we do that through so many things, you know, addictions, you know, men, a whole lot of things that we bring into our life. And then we end up abusing ourselves, harming ourselves. And so it was just a constant searching of why am I here? What is this about? Like I wanted those answers and I couldn't believe that nobody else wanted them. Like I talked to people and they're like, we're just here, like get over it, you know? And I'm like, no, there has to be a bigger reason that we're here. And so that put me on the path for searching really to actually survive. But from the outside, I looked like I was having a beautiful life. I got married, I had beautiful kids, everything. And yeah, so it was definitely that search. And until one day, you know, my life started unraveling, truths came out about the abuse, things like that. And all of a sudden, when you begin to reveal things, all of a sudden, everything unravels. And uh, it got to the point, I won't go through the whole story, uh, but it got to the point where one day I dropped to my knees and I call that my eat, pray, love moment. But I had that in my lounge room with little kids and <laughs> I was separated by that stage. And I dropped to my knees and I just said, I cannot do this anymore. I was crying and crying. I couldn't stop. For like the week before, I felt like someone had died and I couldn't understand why I just because I could always kind of hold it together for my kids and everything. And all of a sudden I reached this point where something had come over me and I was just crying, crying, crying. I couldn't stop like 24 hours, like couldn't stop. And that's when I dropped to my knees and I said, I cannot do this anymore. And what I realized afterwards was what was dying was my old self. Okay. It was, I was feeling that death of me, the old self, that woman that was fit, like seeing the world through fear now and attracting that to herself, all of a sudden was dying. The 3D kind of version of me was dying there. I was releasing that. And I dropped to my knees and I said, I cannot do this anymore. And for the first time I heard this audible voice and it said, you are nothing without me. And although it sounds negative <laughs> that you're nothing, like it, it actually meant you are everything with me. And I knew that was God. It was like this loud, audible voice. And then I knew that because of the peace that surrounded me, the love that entered me. I had never felt anything like that, except for when I was a little girl, I remember feeling that. But it was just everything around me. It was just peace. It was just like, oh, it, was, it felt heavenly to me, right? And I was just in that presence constantly. And that was the only time I heard an audible voice. And, but from then on, I realized all my thoughts were beginning to change. Everything I thought would be then changed to truth. Everything, everything that I was used to thinking, it was like, no, it was changed as truth. And that's what Jesus spoke of. My father and I are one. I think the thoughts of God. Okay. And I believe we all have access to that. And that literally transformed my world and that's how I'm divinely led. My thoughts are always being transferred and changed to those of how God thinks, how God sees and things like that. So it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love hearing the story. I don't think I've heard bits and pieces of it, but I haven't really heard it like concisely put together like yeah. that. So it's really incredible. You know, I think that there's this beautiful part of you that is, I mean, first of all, I guess I just want to say that like, Maria is just a, I don't, it sounds bad to say this because I don't mean it negatively, but it's like, Maria's just a regular chick. Like, yes. she's beautiful and gorgeous. And she's like the, one of the most spiritual, divinely led people I know, but she is not that spiritual chick. Like, she's just a normal woman. Um, and it's part <laughs> of why I love her so much because I think we resonate a lot when it comes to that. But I know that you can listen to her. And I mean, those of you that are listening to the podcast, I'm sure will see the image of the two of us in the episode. But she's just this really regular woman, very approachable, very relatable woman. And so for me, it's so incredible. And I think, of course, God chose you as one of his divine channels. 
So you literally have this woman that's just super hot, by the way. We call her hot Jesus because she's literally like the daughter of God. So we call her hot Jesus, but she's literally this regular woman that just is the voice of God. She is a divine channel. And I know a lot of times like she doesn't fully come out and out herself as that, or she doesn't portray that to the world because she is so loving of the collective. But this woman channels God and she channels God every day. I have had the privilege and pleasure of working with her one-on-one -on -one and receiving those direct messages from God through her. And it's unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life. So talk to me a little bit about what that's like. Like, what is it like to be a divine channel of God? What is it like to be given messages for people that impact their lives so significantly? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything that Leah just said about me, we can just put that back on Leah, right? Because she's the most divine being I have ever met, right? So she's just incredible. No matter how connected I am to the divine, I receive so much by being around Leah and just so is she, right? Everything. She's so divinely connected. That's why I wanted to work with her too. We had that connection. We understood that. And um, it's so beautiful to be around her energy. But I just love, yes, I am a real chick. Yes, I love that. That's why God uses us, right? That's why God uses us. So you don't think, oh, but she's special or she's, you know, a nun or I don't have that life or whatever. No, I've had an incredible life and it's been crazy and I've been divorced I've had you know like God can use anyone and it's not about the Bible teachings or anything but in the Bible it actually shows that God used murderers and all of a sudden changed their lives and they became one of God's greatest followers it's when you're touched by God that is when you change God uses the craziness and makes it incredible right so there's nothing to be perfect it's not about perfection it doesn't matter what you've done in life you're not being judged there's nothing about perfection god does not judge god is a love presence on this planet right so it's just on in everything and it will use people like me i was never perfect i was never a nun i wasn't even going to church <laughs> i wasn't doing any of the things right but God is calling out to each one of us, okay? And we'll use each one of us. And so I'm supposed to be all woman. I'm supposed to be who I am to attract the people that I'm meant to attract to hear my message, just like each one of us. We were created with other people in mind. And so we were created exactly how God wanted us to be, okay? So you being more you is actually perfect, it's just you realizing your greatness. It's actually perfect, okay? Leah being beautiful and amazing and just like so driven and so successful and well, she is, you know, like I remember she is the God of rich abundance, right? Her being all of her, but also being that woman and the mother and the, and the wife and everything that she is, it's all of it. I can relate to her, okay? And so each one of us were created a certain way, but we judge ourselves as though, as though we created. And God says, don't judge yourself because you did not create yourself. You do not get to judge yourself. I created you perfectly. Who are you to judge yourself? I created you. It's like you're saying to God, this isn't good enough. I'm not okay with all this. No, you have to celebrate who you are. You have to celebrate who you be. And, and that's what attracts the other people. We are all perfect. God did not make one great guy, one Jesus, and then fucked up the rest of us. You know, we are all perfect. We are all perfect. We were all perfect children. You wouldn't look at a child and go, what's wrong with you? No, you're perfect. You're beautiful, you know? And we lose that at some stage. And so the more we be ourselves, the more we get to just accept who we are as, and, and know that God lives within us. Like that energy, it's, God is an energy. It's not a man or anything that you've been taught. It's an energy that lives within us. And that's what you then portray out to the world. That's why you, you look alive and feel alive and feel, you know, like you're magnetic to the world then, you know? Yeah. So it is interesting. Like it just brings up this thing. I think that, you know, you and I are in complete alignment around this, where when we actually talk about Jesus, it's like, he wasn't this perfect 
man. He was a man, right? Like yeah. he was a man. And I think that people get really caught up in the programming and conditioning of what we've been raised to believe that God, Jesus, the divine is. And I think one of the things that we very early on resonated with was that you don't have to be this pious, church going, uber religious, dogmatic person to have a direct connection to God. And, you know, that you can eat bacon and drink and yes. curse and be a really, really enjoy and live your human experience and still be divinely guided by God. So I would love to, for you to just riff on that a little bit. Yeah, it's all about that. And even my dad, the way he was, he was so connected to God. My dad's passed now, but he was so connected to God, but people loved him because he was full of life. He was a man. He was hot. He was loved my mom. Like, but you know, like, he was an adventurer. My parents were always hosting parties. It was full of life. It was just a party to be alive. And they were, you know, they brought people in all the time. And it was just always very, you know, South American, Spanish, <laughs> celebrating music. It was always exciting being around him. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to really, really love this life. And, and it is supposed to show us the reflection of who we're being. So... There are a lot of people going to church. There are a lot of people being religious. And are they truly happy? Are they abundant? Are they in love with their life? You know, like, it doesn't mean you need to go. You do what you like, but you don't have to go within those four walls. God is here. God is within you right now. And the more real we are, the more we celebrate life. Everything has been given to us. All of it. And we forget that it's all ours, all this gift. You have the ocean, the sky, the trees, everything. Everything is yours. It's like it's been handed on a platter. Here you go. And we build these walls around us to separate ourselves from everything. And it's about coming together more. It's about being the human that we are, but remembering that we are divine beings having this human experience. And we get to play. This is play. This is play in this world here. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I'm so passionate about is this idea of hypostatic union, which is fully realizing your humanity and your divinity at the same time. So this is truly what I believe Jesus did. Like, I yeah. don't believe Jesus walked on water because he was the son of God. I think that we all have the ability to do that. It's simply that Jesus had fully mastered his humanity and his divinity. And in a way that the combination of those two things made him able to realize parts of himself that are currently unavailable to many of us because we just haven't developed that level of self-mastery. And it is that, like it is embracing our humanity and embracing our divinity equally. It's not one more than the other. And I think that's really, as human beings, that's where we get out of balance. We forget that we're this divine immortal soul housed inside this physical vessel like we're not just one or the other, we're both. And it is both of those things together that make this experience on this planet, planet Earth, the magical, amazing thing that it is. Like, and it is this beautiful gift that we've been given. But when we don't embrace both, we're really shortchanging ourselves in a way. Absolutely. Like look at Leah's life. She is a beautiful example of a human being and a divine being. Like she uses both of those powers and just lives the most gorgeous, beautiful life. You are such an example of that. Jesus was an example of what we get to be, of that remembrance of that we are both, you know, and Jesus knew that. And so that's the example of who we be. It wasn't like he was just one and that was it. He was just an example. It was just showing us that. But also we as women, because the story was around a man, we forget that women also have that power. And Leah is such a beautiful example of that. The power that she brings, the power that she brings to community, you know, and her beliefs and everything and, and abundance for everything and everyone here on the planet. Like, she's a stand for that. You know, you are a beautiful example of the human and the divine, just being and living in abundance here on this planet. So I love it. <laughs> Thank you. 
So one of the things that you talk about a lot that I would love for you to share with my listeners is this idea that, you know, we are the new apostles and that we are literally writing a new Bible right now. At this time in history, we are literally writing a new Bible. So I would love for you to talk about that. And then you may also like weave in there the information about the gods. Okay. So because I search for purpose so much, (laughs) then God turned to me and said, okay, so what I want you to do is actually, I will reveal your purpose because that's what I search for all my life. I will reveal your purpose. And then I want you to reveal it to others too. You're here to reveal your purpose, their life's vision, why I created them. I want you to reveal that to people. And God said, the leaders will come to you. Okay. The leaders will come. You don't have to do anything. The leaders will come to you. (laughs) The right leaders. I'll have a calling in their life and they'll come to you. So I began to do life purpose sessions and I realized that each being, each person had this God energy, right? And that's what was being revealed. And each one of us represent an energy. I know Leah refers to it like an energy signature, I think you say sometimes, but yeah, a God energy. We are all gods. Even actually Jesus taught that in the Bible, ye are gods, right? Ye are gods, but they forget to tell us that bit, you know? Christians will always say that Jesus said this, Jesus said that, but they leave that bit out because it's like, you cannot be greater than Jesus. Like we're all Jesus walking this planet. We have just forgotten who we be. And so then as I began to reveal more and more of the energies, I realized that, and I got downloads saying there's a new Bible coming, a new Bible. And these are actually the people that are coming to you, these leaders that you are revealing their energy and their purpose and mission and why they're here and everything. These are actually the characters of the new Bible. These are the characters of the new Bible. And the new Bible is all about states of being, right? So people could go to that Bible and learn about these states of being, these energy beings right these gods of an energy what it represents so for leah she is the god of rich abundance so people would be able to look into the bible and see what rich abundance represents what that means to tap into it is a transmission even being around leah being that god you are transmitted her energy her energy her certainty of of what she believes is true is just like being in her energy and that's why i love being in her energy because she has this certainty about who she be is about rich abundance for everybody in all areas of life okay so it's money everything everything but she transmits that energy these gods are activations on our planet okay and she activates that within you and so each one of the gods that i call them i say i create gods and it's just I don't create, it's, it's a remembrance of who you already be. And each person goes, uh, yeah, that's me, right? So there will be a Bible, it's being downloaded as we speak. And the actual downloads that I do are actually the downloads for those new energies, those new characters of the Bible. And it's for people to learn about what are these energies that I can tap into? What are the energies, but the states of being that each one of us has that divine energy within us, but it lies dormant until it's activated. And so that's what the the new Bible will be an activation of those energies within each one of us. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Wealth Witch Podcast. I wanted to take a quick break to talk to you about an amazing offer I have to work with me like my high-end clients do for a fraction of the investment. If there's anything that the last several months of chaos and change has showed us, it's that our perceptions of what is safe, stable, and secure is anything but. You are your guarantee. You are the key to unlocking and calling in the wealth that you desire. If you don't already know, I'm all about belief and intention. And for me, deciding is the most important action you can take. So I don't need to convince you. You'll either resonate with this or not. The only prerequisite that you need to have is a desire to change your current financial reality. This mastermind I'm about to tell you about is about empowering you to take back control of your financial destiny and take action towards creating the life that you deeply desire. The Wealth Alchemy Mastermind is hosted via the Telegram app, and I've set it up in a way that it's accessible. This is an incredible opportunity to work with me in this mastermind at a special pre-launch rate of $44 a month. 
Yes, you heard that right. Just $44 a month to work with me at the same level that some of my high-end clients do. So what do you get? Weekly exclusive content and training, a monthly Zoom coaching call, a monthly Q&A session, wealth paradigm downloads, wealth activations, and a mastermind chat full of like-minded community. You aren't doing this mastermind for the content. You're doing it for the transmissions, period. You will be activated with abundance just by being in this container, but you have to act fast. The pre-launch offer is only available for a limited time. So click the link in the description of the podcast and sign up now. I'd love for you to join me. So do the thing. Now back to the podcast. So tell us a little bit about some of these other gods. Like who are these other characters that you've found so far? Okay, so there's so, so many. (laughs) But, well, one that I love is your husband, Sean, who came out straight away. So everything comes out like God of this, God of that, the God, this this being is a god of this energy. So Leah is rich abundance. Actually, she was abundance. And then because she is so in her purpose and doing that all the time, your purpose also can evolve and change and shift. And hers went even deeper to rich abundance, right? And rich abundance was for everybody. I'll explain more about that in a sec. But yeah, like we've got Sean, who is creator. He's creator energy. And if you hear Sean speak, he's all about that. Like he just like cannot stop. It's just all, he sees the world in a different way. He sees it from a big vision from like, we're all seeing it from here. And the way I know creator is like when he speaks, I just know that's the message coming through. But this came through before I even knew Sean. So yeah, and he is that creator energy. And so he sees things as creator, as that source energy that comes through. There are so, <laughs> there's so many that I can't even think of. Um, there's God of enchantment. There's, I've done hundreds of them. And each one of them just blows my mind because until I actually download, I have no idea. I know there's greatness in each one of us, but it comes through in such, such great detail. So I just want to share a little bit about you, if that's okay. 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 (laughs) Okay. So part of Leah's purpose right now, and you'll see this coming through in her work all the time, but your purpose is to release the dogma of this world. So this was the evolution of her abundance, which then became rich abundance. To release the dogma of this world, you came to release the struggle that is happening here on earth. You will have none of that. You are done. And if you are around Leah, you know, she's just like, fuck that. I'm done. This is the way it has to be. And it's her certainty that actually shifts the planet and shifts the world, right? So God says about Leah, you go out and create more. There is no time to be wasted on the benign. I love this, Leah, because it came through. There is no time to be wasted on the benign, which means kind and favorable. (laughs) We need you in your force. This is like Leah saying to us, there is no time to be kind and all that. It's like, we need you in your full force. And so you are a creative sort of sorts you bring things into existence and then there is more that's what she does all the time she brings things into existence and there's more so you're a master of this game you get to expand more and more as you you do Uh, your expression is divine rich abundance this is who you be you will not fathom anything less your purpose is to bring the people to the knowledge that rich abundance exists and is thriving within all right so Another part that I also uh, read just before I got on, which blew me away, God said to Leah, yes, rich abundance, you are it. You came to show others how to be. Know that this is more than abundance, as in the source is electric and it is from a field of abundance that creates and moves as an energetic force in this plane. Show them how to be. It is an energetic frequency and expectation that you now bring. It is done in one and all in love. So we received that in early January, I think it was. And I love it because she is an energy. She is a frequency. She is all that. And she came to shift this world. And it's not just, the thing I love about Leah, it's just not, it's never been about, okay, I'm rich, I'm abundant, boom, that's it. It's like, no, she has this drive that, 
everybody gets to be that. She wants everybody to step into that, everybody to live in the new timeline, everybody to succeed and thrive, okay? So she's driven by everybody having that and that's why she's she's strong and she's certain and she's just like like i've received transmissions from her like i'm always divinely led always receiving divine downloads and yet i go to her because she's also one of the gods right she's also one of the gods and she gets to transmit that and I've received activations from her that have completely changed my life, my money situation, my everything because of her certainty, because she knows, okay, she actually said to me once, she goes, I'm not available for you to have any problems with money. This is the story now. This is what it is. And that transmission was just like boom inside of me. And my money story changed forever from then. Okay. So I was then making six figures just from doing my purpose work. And it was just this certainty, I'm not available for that. This is what it is. This is your new story. And that's how powerful she is. She actually shifts the vibration and energy of who you be. And I was like, okay. And I just, you know, went on and everything shifted. But I love that we received this because she is an energetic frequency, but also she has brought in a way for everybody to thrive right now and it is an energetic frequency. So I don't know if you want to speak about Healy or not, but she brought that into everybody, okay? And I love that because we're so aligned because like 24 hours before I had been looking for, um, because I've done Dr. Joe's events and things like that, and he used to measure people's frequencies. He no longer does that. But I thought, I want to measure my frequency. Like what, am I, what does my aura look like when I channel and things like that? And all of a sudden, Leah posted something and I said, tell me what you're talking about because I feel like that's what I'm thinking about, you know? And, and she said, oh my gosh, there's this thing and it measures your frequency, it measures your aura, all this stuff. And I was like, yes, straight in, like, that's it. Like we prayed for this, we prayed for a way for everyone to have abundance, to have health, to have everything, right? And she brought that into us. She brought that in so that her community could thrive so that you're not also choking your purpose and and it's just like <laughs> all the pressure on purpose either you know like you're doing your purpose so you can get the money it's like you get to do your purpose you get to do that you also get to be in an incredible business and she stepped into that because she could see the wealth that could be created the health that could be created like the abundance in all areas of life that's how powerful she is because of her vision that came in that came in. The world is always reflecting what we are wanting, desiring, and who we are being. And she wanted a vision for her community. And all of a sudden this was made and it came through. And so she's taking us all on that journey and offering that to many, many beings, right? So you're so, so giving, so, so loving, so, so giving. It's for everyone. It's never just been, oh, it's just for me. It's for everyone. That's what I love about you. It's, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that this comes with living a life that's divinely guided. When you are connecting into God that way, and when you decide to live a life of service, where, you know, each morning I wake up and the first thing I ask is, what would you have me do today? How would you have me serve? And then I proceed to follow those directions. And at night I go to bed and I take an inventory of where I allowed my ego to get in the way and I didn't serve the divine and I make a commitment to do better the next day, you know? And so I think that that really truly is one of the things that happens when you begin to live a life divinely guided is it no longer is about you. It's about the collective. It is about humanity as a whole. So for me, yes, I love living this life of rich abundance. I love being surrounded by luxury. I love living in states of overflow and it would be completely meaningless to me if I wasn't activating that in the collective, if I wasn't allowing more and more people to step into states of overflow, if I wasn't showing people that they are worthy and deserving of rich abundance in all areas of their life, that they're worthy and deserving of being wealthy. And so, by the way, if you haven't heard me say this a thousand times already, wealthy, the word wealthy comes from two words. The word wealthy literally means well and healthy. So to be wealthy means to be well and healthy. And for me, it is about all areas of your life. It's not just financial, though that's certainly included. 
So I think that 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 is the very special part about choosing to surrender your will to the divine's will and choosing to show up from a place of service is that you are released from those bonds of selfishness where it's just about you. You literally cannot live any moment of any day without it being about the collective. And so, you know, for me, that's been the biggest gift of living this divinely led life. What has been your biggest gift? Okay, so the same, always plugging in, the first thing is you get to either plug into the matrix or the divine, right? So I choose to plug into the divine and that's also me saying, what is it that you want me to know today? What is it that you want me to do? Um, And I receive my answer. Then the next thing I do is what is it that you want me to share with the world? There is always a message there. So something that I've been blown away when I've done all my life purpose sessions and everything is that... I'm always communicating, okay? So it's not you go to church, like that's not about that. Like it's not about you being, oh, I'll be in those walls and then I'll talk to God. No, it's about always having this communication with the divine. It's, we all have it. I don't think I'm special or Lee is special. Everybody has it. And it's always about being in that awareness that there is a solution, there is a way, there is, there is peace at each moment, and you get to step into that. But being able to communicate where, where people say, oh, but how do you do that? And it's just like, I communicate, I have a relationship. I ask questions and so I receive an answer. That's the only difference. And I've realized a lot of the leaders have gone, oh, you ask questions. Yes, I ask questions all day long. It's like, what, what would you have me do? Or what is this about? Or this person is going through this or my child or whatever. You have that direct connection to the divine. There's no different. We all have. It's, it's within us, right? It's not we have to go to something with four walls and someone else tells us. It's within us. So that's my greatest gift. Like, I don't even know how I'd be if I didn't have that beautiful connection. Life is hard without it. And at times, even though I'm always communicating, at times, you know, things will happen on a Saturday or something and it'll be like, I'll start being a mum and doing this and doing that. And all of a sudden I haven't connected myself or just received that answer. And it just puts you at peace. It's a beautiful energy that you feel just going through you. It's who you be. And all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, what about this? And what about that? And I don't know, things will start getting into my head. (laughs) And all of a sudden my kids will kind of look at me and just go, "Um, have you talked to God today? Because your energy is like kind of all over the place today. <laughs> so they'll pick it up straight away. They're like, um, hang on, <laughs> something's not working here. Have you talked to God today? Like, go do that. <laughs> and then everything's fine again. But yeah, so that's one of the greatest gifts and also the gift of giving purpose, right? And so you and I both teach so much on purpose and how beautiful it is to be led by purpose and be pulled by purpose because no matter what's going on in your life, if you're pulled by purpose, that drives you, that gives you an energy. It's a moving forward. Like you've got vision for your life, right? You've got a vision and and you've got people to serve. You're here to serve something. And something that I want everyone to get is that, you know, you don't have this life and then you think, oh, maybe I'll do my purpose one day or whatever. You have purpose and that is why you were given life. First and foremost, you have purpose. That is why you were given life. That's why you are here. And we're here to self-realize and find what that is within each one of us and then to do that, okay? Because the world actually needs us. When we're on purpose, we're the medicine for this world. And so for me, it's a huge gift that I get to reveal that to the beings. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I feel the same, like helping people Mm -hmm. step into purpose is, is, is one of the greatest gifts that I've been given. So Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love, and I think we'll end it with this because this is so powerful. It's like that idea of where are you plugging in and you just said it and it is so powerful. Are you choosing? And it's a choice, right? It's a choice every day. Where are you plugging in? Are you choosing to plug into the matrix or are you choosing to plug into the divine? Because each one of us has the ability to do that. So, 
so amazing. It's been so amazing having you on. Thank you so much for your time. Maria does these incredible life purpose sessions that are downloaded from the divine. So if you are wondering what your purpose is on this planet or you're looking for more clarity, and let me just tell you that these sessions are so detailed. They are so incredibly detailed. You will have no question what it is that you're on this planet to do. We are going to drop the link for those life purpose sessions here in the description of the podcast, as well as all the places that you can find Maria on the socials and on the interwebs. So with that, we will say goodbye. Maria, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I love you so much. This is one incredible, we all know it, but one incredible, incredible woman here on this planet. Like, so gifted we are to be around you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, this is The Wealth Witch signing off. That's a wrap. Thank you for joining me. Remember, wealth is a mindset and you absolutely deserve to live the life you deeply desire and with belief and intention you create your reality. Until next time, this is Leah Steele, The Wealth Witch.